Hi, this is Katie, and I'm here today to talk about some of the muscles that brass musicians don't really get to talk about a whole lot, or we just don't talk about in general at all. Not a lot of us know about them. So um, I'm going to talk about some of the muscles around the face and upper body that cause a lot of tension or uh, get in the way of our playing or lead to um, not only strain and stress on our muscles um, over time from playing, but just um, general habits of the jaw like eating, um, moving our neck, bad posture, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these muscle groups and how you can kind of release them. How I learned this is through uh, my myofascial specialist who I worked with many years ago. So if you're a musician, whether brass player, woodwind player, um, singer, <laughs> anyone that is having any type of uh, jaw pain or muscle pain in the face or the neck or the back, um, Working with a dentist that specializes in um, myofunctional therapy or either a neurodentistry or even working with a myofascial release therapist uh, will help you significantly. If you're having any type of strain or pain, whether you're um, dealing with uh, TMD, temporal mandibular uh, joint disorder, or you're dealing with uh, focal dystonia and the tension that comes from retraining, or you're, you know, you're suffering from any type of pain, in these muscle groups that you use in your playing. But first of all, I just want to say that as musicians, we have a lot of things that we don't often think about that affect our playing. And and I think when we're younger, sometimes we get caught up in the whole like feeling like we're invincible. Um, you know, nothing can really stop us, but we don't really think about how things outside of our playing affect our health. We don't think about, you know, when we're gonna get older, if things aren't gonna work the same or how we're gonna handle that, or how we'll maneuver it. Because we look at our teachers and we look at famous musicians and we think, well, if they do it, I have nothing to worry about. There's nothing that's gonna happen to me because I've never heard of a musician that's had an injury because nobody talks about it. It just becomes this whole like hidden realm of like nobody talks about anything. Some of the things we don't really think about is how we can take better care of our muscle groups in the first place. Um, so especially being brass players, we're dealing with a lot of the upper body. We're dealing with our facial muscles, our neck muscles, our back muscles as well. Thinking about how, what types of food we eat, how much pressure we're putting on the jaw, these become important things in the long run. So if you're having any type of pain, first of all, start avoiding um, any type of strain on the upper body, whether that be like carrying heavy things, including the food you eat, like not uh, chewing anything that's too difficult on the jaw, whether it's like bagels or steak or salads or anything crunchy or any bad habits like biting the, your nails, even yawning too much, like if you're having any jaw pain and just being more highly aware of what you're intaking in your body, like avoiding caffeine because caffeine and sugar dehydrates the muscles and puts strain on them. You know, if you're clenching or grinding, really trying to stop that during the daytime. Um, and if you do at nighttime, uh, wearing a professional guard or having one that's made if you can afford one. Uh, also being more highly aware and even studying up on like what is the best tongue position for you. So for example, um, most people in order to have healthy jaw movement, we need to have our tongue uh, positioned uh, on the roof of our mouth. And we need to not be breathing out of our mouth as much as we do uh, when we're not playing, when we're not talking, when we're not eating. Um, but again, it's it's one of those things if you can't do it or it's too strainful, it could be due to other factors like um, you could have tongue tie. So don't do that if it hurts, but you can look up on the research on it and on uh, mouth breathing and like where your tongue position should be. What is a healthy tongue position when you're you're resting, when you're not playing, when you're not talking, when you're not eating? Where should it be? Um, and also how you should be breathing outside of your playing. Um, we should be breathing through our nose, not through our mouth all the time. Most people that do, it could be due to their skeletal structure or because they have more of like an overbite. So there's a couple of uh, main muscle groups that we should be aware of as brass players, as wind players. And the first is going to be the sternocleidomastoid. Now this is the huge muscle that runs along our neck here.
It starts at the back of the ear here, and this muscle runs all the way down to the base of our sternum, which is right here, like kind of like the front of our collarbone. Also runs back down over here into our upper shoulder here. And this muscle is responsible for us being able to move our head uh, left to right and side to side and back and forward. So it plays a huge role in the tension in our plane and it plays a huge role in our jaw movement too. So the first way to try to release this muscle, and it can take a lot of work if you have a lot of tension there, especially if you're a musician that has uh, cervical dystonia, you're gonna wanna work with a specialist to do this because uh, it's gonna take a lot of work to get that muscle to release um, every day. Um, you're gonna try to work and grind at it every day. And again, you wanna check with a specialist before you do this. Don't try it at home on yourself unless uh, you've uh, talk to your doctor or you talk to a specialist. So these are just a couple exercises. They're not the full range of them that you could do, but uh, these are the ones that help me the most. Again, if you're interested, you can look up uh, myofascial release therapy. You can look up uh, uh, intraoral myofascial release therapy, which is involving releasing muscles around the face and jaw, or myofunctional release therapy in dentistry. First of all, with the sternocleidomastoid uh, muscle release, or SCM, um, there's two ways that you can uh, kind of work on this muscle. If you have cervical dystonia, this is too painful. Don't, don't do this by yourself, okay? So you're gonna turn your head to the left or right, but I'm gonna turn mine to the left right now. And when you do, and you look in the mirror, you should see your SCM just kind of like bulge up there. And you want to go ahead and run your thumb, if you can, from your ear down that muscle, okay? I'm gonna run it down into your shoulder first. You can do that a couple times. But try to not resist it. Try to relax and let your thumb push against it because it will try to resist it. And then you're gonna go ahead and do it again, running from the ear down into the sternum. And if you feel pain or you feel like, wow, my muscles are so sore there, it, it's definitely um, because your muscle there is pretty tense. But um, it's pretty common, you know, a lot of us have a lot of tension in this area. Again, you can do these uh, exercises maybe like two to three times a day if um, you need to, but um, don't overdo it. All right, and then the next one is you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. You're gonna turn your head to the left. This time you're gonna go ahead and pinch. You're gonna start near the ear here again. You're gonna pinch all the way going down, okay? You can just kind of hold that pinch too in some places and then release. And just kind of keep working at it. You're just gonna pinch along that muscle. And again, don't forget to go into the shoulder and try to pinch it there and then go all the way down into the sternum do the same thing on this side. And I love that my myofascial uh, release therapist really worked with me on this. There's like a little rubber ball that she used to release it and she could really get deep down in there with this little ball. It would hurt so much, but it was such a good relief. So the next muscle we're gonna deal with is a masseter. It's right here in the back of the jaw and it goes from here up to here. You can see that when you open and close your mouth. to try to release this um, you're just gonna take your knuckles and you're gonna go ahead and um, you're gonna run up the sides of your cheek okay and then again doing resistant work going down so going down the sides and then back up and this one feels really good especially if you got a lot of tension in your master muscles back here but you really want to get back here because you have to remember this is a very large muscle if you have TMJ, don't push too hard on that muscle because if you're having any cracking or popping going on your jaw, you don't want to disturb that. It's a complex joint that we have there. It can go up and down and forward and back and side to side. It's really good at the up and down and uh, the forward and back, but the side to side, not so much. It's not built to endure pressure from the side. So another good thing is if you're having any type of jaw pain or uh, TMD pain, 
uh, don't rest your jaw on your hands when you're leaning at a desk and don't put any type of pressure on it side to side like whether you're leaning on a knuckle or hand or when you sleep like leaning heavily on your jaw. Uh, now one muscle that I forgot to mention before we moved to the masseter was the trapezius muscle which a lot of us have pain involved. Well, I think almost every person has had trapezius pain back their attention in our back of our shoulder blade back here. You need an additional hand to get really deep down in there to massage that or to release that but if you get any type of massager um, that can help too. I also have like a, a back device that I use to um, lean against the wall or, or lay on on the floor and I do a bunch of back uh, stretches on it. Also if anybody has cervical dystonia or any type of really intense back pain, one thing that can help is you can get this, uh, I think it's called an inversion table, and you basically can hook yourself up to it and um, almost like put yourself upside down in a way, and this puts all, this relieves all the pressure off your back. And then again, relieving any type of tension on the upper body for hurting and pain, you can use those um, uh, neck traction devices, which are like the pillows I've showed in some of my videos that fill up with air, you have a little pump. It basically uh, gives your neck muscles and your spine a chance to rest and to relax and to let go of any tension that's involved with holding the head up. Um, if you didn't know, our head is really heavy and um, anytime we're not having good posture, like if we're leaning forward too much, like looking at a computer screen and we're putting our head forward, um, that adds five pounds of pressure on our neck muscles. That's a lot of strain. We don't realize it, but it's a lot of strain. So the more we can keep our head kind of um, aligned and in a good posture and kind of hovering on the base of our spine, that helps a lot. You see a lot of um, vocal performance majors or vocalists talk about like having the string on the top of your head that's kind of pulling you up and um, almost like a puppet and it's keeping your head up and you want to make sure that you're kind of in this good posture position where you feel like it's coming from the top of your head. And it always kind of reminds me of Petrushka. I don't know why I think of the puppet and then I, it reminds me to have good posture. Whenever I hear Petrushka, I think good posture, good posture. Now the next muscle group I'm gonna talk about is the temporalis. So that's gonna be our, our upper head here. How we relieve tension there, you can just go ahead and run your knuckles against the sides here. Again, don't try this at home if it hurts and it's not um, helping you. Again, consult a doctor first. You can kind of pull your hair over here on this side, or you can do the side as well, or you can do it at the same time. Um, and just pulling your hair in different spots to kind of relieve this pressure from the uh, temporalis up here. Okay, see that? <laughs> Look, my wrinkle went away and uh, pulling back here. Another one I really liked is over here by my ear because I had a lot of tension right here in my masseter, um, especially because I was suffering from uh, TMD uh, years ago. Um, I felt like pulling over here, so pulling your ear down or back or forward can kind of help relieve this muscle back here because we do have a lot of kind of bulkiness uh, in our jaw that builds up. So pulling your ear or pulling your hair in any area where you're feeling tension can kind of help and release this temporalis muscle. Now the next muscle I'm going to talk about is the medial pterygoid muscle. This muscle runs over here in the back of the jaw. It's kind of even deeper than the masseter here. Now this muscle, it's really tough and it's very sore and it also causes a lot of problems. medial pterygoid muscle, how we reach that is you want to go ahead and put your thumb in from the opposite side. So if I'm doing my right side here, I'm going to use my left hand. I'm going to take my thumb, I'm going to reach all the way back to the back of my jaw and um, you'll feel that ridge there, kind of where your bone is, and then right in front of it there's kind of this like meatiness there. You need to put your thumb on that kind of meaty part. 
and then you're gonna run it, the thumb from the back to the front. And so you kind of want to relax your um, jaw when you're doing this, but if you need to open it up a little bit and you feel that helps, then you can do that too. This muscle isn't easy to reach, so if you don't have small hands, sometimes you can't do it. And this next one especially is difficult to get to. Not everybody can do it at all. So you have to have a really small pinky to get back to the lateral pterygoid. Now this lateral pterygoid muscle is known to wreak havoc, I guess, in the jaw world. So you want to make sure that you can release it somehow. Um, so again, working with a specialist can help here. I'm going to use the same side. So if I'm going to my right side, I'm going to use my right hand. And I have a really small pinky. And I'm going to keep my mouth closed for the most part because I'm not going to be able to reach it if I open up my mouth. I have to keep my mouth closed so I can uh, keep this muscle relaxed because um, if it's not relaxed, there's too much pressure between the teeth and this muscle here, and it it, it, will, it feels like it's crushing your pinky. But I'm going to try and um, get all the way back. It's like right, right here. It's like way back here. And I'm going on the upper teeth here. I'm going all the way back, and I'm going to go past the bone, past the bone here. So I'll go on the inside of my cheek, past my bone. I'm just gonna say that this one really hurts a lot. In some of my other videos, I showed uh, just a general way to release the muscles around your face. My specialist showed me and taught me was I started in the center of my cheek here to just kind of release the tissue in my face. So uh, a general rule of thumb is that whenever you are pushing up against a muscle uh, on the inside, and it should feel soft. It should feel soft, almost like butter. But when it doesn't, it feels more like steak then there's gonna be there's tension that needs to be released. Also, if you're pushing up against the muscle, you can feel it kind of fight you, then that's going to need to be released. What helped the most was starting in the center of the cheek here, and then kind of working my way back, um, because I had a lot of tension back here, a lot of pain back here in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my left hand again to address my right side. I'm going kind of up and down to feel if the muscle feels worse when I push up, or if it feels worse when I push down, or if I push side to side, to figure out which direction is causing the most amount of tension or resistance. You can see I found a spot and I was pushing against it really hard. Now again, you want to work with a specialist because you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to hurt yourself. But it does require a lot of pressure to release these muscles and to release the tissue. Um, so I would start with that and I would hold it for a really long time until it released. And if it hurt too much, I would move on. I would do that and I would work my way back to my jaw, all the way back here. And then I come back and do up here, kind of in a C formation, and work my way from here all the way back, and then back down and over here. There are also a bunch of tongue exercises you can look up that help relieve tension in the tongue. Uh, also, tongue exercises that also help relieve pressure in the jaw. So, like exercises like moving the tongue around the teeth, the upper teeth, and then the bottom teeth, um, that type of thing. Also, floor of mouth release, too. That's another really important one. So, floor of mouth release, you're basically gonna take your finger and you're going to put it uh, behind your teeth where the gums meet and you're going to go ahead and apply pressure uh, as you work your way to your back molar on the floor of the mouth. Oof. Yeah. And then when you get all the way back there you want to apply a little bit more pressure. It can hurt really bad so you, again you want to be really careful. It's very sensitive. Also, if you have a gag reflex, um, this may not be your most favorite one to do. Also, uh, just making sure that you're doing these exercises really slowly. I'm kind of rushing them in this video, but 
just doing them slowly, making sure that you're taking your time to relieve that tension. Like when you're pinching or you're, uh, you know, pushing against the muscle, making sure that you're taking the time to be aware of your body, really feeling the sensations, being highly aware where there, it feels like there's more tension and areas where there's less tension, areas where there's more pain, areas where there's less pain, and really uh, taking note of that. Now for those who are having jaw pain, um, there are some supplements that you can take that, uh, that have helped me, they may not help you, uh, but you can do your research and look online or you can talk to your doctor and consult them too. What really helped me is taking um, collagen supplements, um, also potassium helps a lot, we all know that helps with muscle uh, pain and relief. And with the collagen, I did a whole video on TMD and talked about how collagen supports the jaw joint and also uh, muscle tissue and also magnesium as well you can take too. I also took uh, glucosamine sulfate or something like that. It's one of those G words that's very hard to say. But anyways, uh, these exercises, they're really important to do uh, two to three times a day if you can. And then you can also look up uh, all kinds of different uh, jaw exercises you can do or tongue exercises you can do, uh, upper back uh, exercises you can do, or any type of stretching or relieving muscle tension. And then also taking the supplements and also taking care of uh, your body if you're having inflammation, making sure that you're doing your ice packing, heat packing. Um, and not overdoing things and making sure that you're taking the proper time to rest after you're done doing this You're not going to do this and then just go and play and giving yourself time to recover again Really consulting with a doctor is best to you or a specialist and I also forgot to mention my castor oil How did I forget that if none of you have learned about my castor oil regimen? Um, please watch my TMD video because I talk about that in there and I cannot say enough about castor oil pulling oil pulling but especially with castor oil this is like my lifesaver so uh, please watch that video and if not I'll put a little bit more information in the description section about it for you I hope that you learned a little bit today about some of the muscles that we don't talk about as brass players and that you learned a little bit about how to release them too and I hope that this helps for those who are experiencing pain all right you guys I'll see you later bye